Ready? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, cosecant and secant might be better for some of you that are like, all right, I'm just not remembering tangent, cotangent. I need more practice with them. So you might want to maybe do your cosine. You might want to do your cosecant and secant first when you're doing homework because it's very similar to what we did with sine and cosine. All right? So if you guys look at cosecant, one thing we need to remember is cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, right? It's the reciprocal. So the graphs are going to be very intertwined with each other as well. So what I'm going to do to help us graph a cosecant is I'm going to graph the sine function. So for right now, I want you to forget we're dealing with cosecant, and I want you to think about graphing this problem. Okay? So let's just worry about graphing this, and we'll graph it with a pencil, though, nice and dotted and big, soft, and then I'll show you how to transform it to the cosecant. So if we were to graph this, hopefully you guys had enough practice, we spent two days on it, that you guys should remember amplitude is just going to be your absolute value of your A, which would be the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Right? Yep. Then we take the period. And I say that's 2 pi over B. And here I have 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Right? Yep. We're yes. good. Okay. okay. Um, yes? Why did you put three sine under? Why did I put what? Three sine under Because, remember, cosecant and sine are reciprocals of each other. Remember? Sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. You have to remember this. And when you have to do some change to I, I am. That's what I told you. I told you forget about you're doing cosecant right now, and let's just graph the sine function. So just forget about it for right now, and I'll show you how to go back. So now we have, I figured out what our period was, and I figured out what the amplitude is. Now to find our important points, I take pi over 2 divided by 4. Therefore, my important points are pi over 8. All right? So now let's go and start graphing the sine graph. I know our purpose is to graph the cosecant, but like I said, if we can just graph the sine, I'll show you how to transform it. Okay, so we said our period was pi over two. Then there's four important points, right? Correct? four important points in a period of a sine and a cosine graph. Yeah, to figure the first point, it's pi over 8. To get to the next point, you add another pi over 8. Pi over 8 plus pi over 8 is 2 pi over 8, which is 5 over 4, 1 4. Add another pi over 8, you get 3 pi over 8. Right? Okay, that covers one period. Our amplitude is at 3. So we're going to go up 3 and we're going to go down 3. All right, there's no reflection. So then we know that the sine graph, without any transformations, crosses at 0, 0. So I'll kind of start at that point, and that's where I'm going to end. Then we also remember the sine graph goes automatically up to its max, crosses at halfway point, goes down to its minimum, and then goes back up. Okay. Now, it's very helpful, guys, when you're graphing the sine function, just do it very lightly in a pencil. We're not, remember, we're not graphing the sine function. That's not our answer. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this graph to help us find the cosecant. Okay? So now, what we need to do is um, I need to get kind of um, continue this graph, all right? And this is, I'll just explain why. Um, but remember, we always want to graph more than two periods, right? So I'm just going to extend this a couple more points. If I add another one over, this would be 5 pi over 8. And this would be like 6 pi over 8. And then over here would be like negative pi over 8. And this would be like uh, negative pi over 4. 
Okay, everybody follow me so far? Yes. Okay, yes. now, I told you that cosecant is the inverse of sine, right? Yep. Okay, before we even need to worry about flipping or anything, if you guys look at each one of these intercepts, what is the y value? Now remember, this is the sine graph. So what is the value of my graph at each one of these intercepts? What is the, I'm sorry, what is the y value of my zero. graph? Zero. zero, right? When x equals zero, y equals zero. When x equals pi over four, y equals zero. zero, right? So therefore, what I'm saying is, in this graph, cosecant of pi over four is equal to one over sine of pi over four. So for this graph, what is sine of pi over four? That is what? The y value is what? Yeah. Zero. So therefore, cosecant of pi over four is one over zero. Can you divide by zero? No. No. So therefore, in the cosecant graph, where the x-axis is, is actually what we have as an asymptote. So what I want you to do for your graph is find out where all the x-intercepts are and make it a vertical line, which is going to represent your asymptote. Does everyone understand why we have our asymptotes? Yeah. No. Okay. No? no? Well, I get why you have them. Okay, right. I get it. I get it. Now. Okay. We, it just takes time. You know. So now, do you want to finish off the rest of the graph? All you're going to do is you're going to take your maximum and your minimum points. Max, min, max, your min. And what we're going to do is now we're just going to create kind of like the reflection of this our little parabola curves yeah. heading towards our asymptotes. Okay? So then, now lastly, all I need to do is not worry about my sign graph. So lastly, what I'll do is I'll just kind of take my eraser and I'll erase it. And now what I've created is completely just my cosy curve graph. So do you guys see? Juliana, can you please not talk when I'm explaining? So you can you guys see how we can use the sine graph to explain this? To explain how I found the graph? You do it like that? Yeah, you just do it like that. What about that shading? That was just to help you get to this graph on these fine points. Well, you better erase it. Yeah. Yes, Miss Sierra, how can may I help you?